Hello and welcome to my channel Flores Patch. In today's field trip we are visiting a Leonardo da Vinci exhibition called A Life in Drawing. I'm visiting the one in Southampton but at the moment there are several exhibitions of Leonardo's drawings in lots of different places all around the UK. So this is the Southampton Art Gallery and I'm about to go in to see the Leonardo exhibition and I'm really excited about it. The exhibition starts with a couple of films. The first one is a short biography of Leonardo da Vinci. It tells us that Leonardo was born in April 1442 in the small town of Vinci in Italy near Florence. He was the illegitimate son of a wealthy notary and a local peasant girl. Because of this, he couldn't take his father's name, so he became known as Leonardo da Vinci, which literally means Leonardo from the town of Vinci. At the age of 14, he was sent to Florence for an apprenticeship in the workshop of the artist Verrocchio, who was the leading Florentine artist at the time. In the chart of the best ideas of the whole history of humanity, this would probably make it to the top three. As a professional artist, Leonardo spent his life between Florence, Milan and Rome, working for the most powerful people at the time, wealthy patrons such as the Borgia family, the Medici family, the Pope. At the age of 64, he was scooped up by François Ier, the King of France, who gave him a little chateau of the Clos Lucé, right next to his own big chateau of Amboise. It is at the Clos Lucé that Leonardo spent the last three years of his life. He died in the king's arms at the age of 67. That was exactly 500 years ago. And the Mona Lisa? She travelled with him to France. The second film was about the art materials that Leonardo da Vinci would have had available to work with and I found this film really fascinating. One of the things that Leonardo da Vinci would have had readily available is chalk. So he would have the usual what we know as chalk, white chalk, but also red chalk and black chalk. Now the red one has iron oxides in it which is what makes red and with these three colors you would have been able to sketch very quickly and you would have had a good range of tone with chalk you can only do rough sketches because the medium is quite thick you can't do anything too fine with it and for that you would have gone to use ink with a goose quill that he could have made himself. As far as paper is concerned, it would have been made of rag and like this paper, um, it would have been quite thin. Paper was getting more accessible but still quite expensive to make. There was no optical brighteners, it wasn't bleached so the colour would have been a bit darker than what we know now. So I have this which would have been similar. Um, this one is quite close to the colour of the paper that I saw in the exhibition. And then this one is similar again but a little bit thicker and that could have been used for watercolour washes. He also had ink which would then allow him to refine his drawings. Uh, his ink was made of oak galls which is a wasp parasite growing on oak trees and you would crush this and inside there's like that powder and you can make ink out of it. I don't have ogle ink although you can you can find it. Um, it's available to buy. I don't have any so I'm using um, an acrylic ink instead which is a big cheat. He would also make his own watercolours, which is something he would have learned how to do as an apprentice 
So you would have had different types of reds, all in this powdered form, made from various iron oxides. And you would have had real lapis lazuli. This isn't a real lapis lazuli, but the color is very similar. Made from ground semi-precious stone. And you would have had various earth colors as well. The ochres, umbers, siennas, all of these, again, in powdered pigment, ready to make watercolor. And of course, black with charcoal. To make watercolor, he would have used gum arabic, which is the sap of the acacia tree. Then you would add a little bit of pigment, of ground pigment. And make a mixture. Now if you, if you just leave these two, it will crack and peel off, so you need to add water preferably distilled water, otherwise it's a bit too gummy. And with that, you can make your own watercolor and you can make a wash. And this is one thing I felt was missing from the exhibition. I would have loved to see a cabinet with an exhibition of the genuine things that you would have used. All the things I've shown you, they're not they're not the real thing, they're the equivalent that I have today. But you can still get black chalk and you can still get red chalk and ogul ink. And I would have liked to see a display of this and see the materials and see some work done with those materials in the same style as he did. And even better, I would have loved to have a workshop where somebody would come and teach for a couple of hours how to do Leonardo style drawing using the things that he was using. And I think that could have been really successful and I certainly would have absolutely loved to do that. The exhibition is held in a single room with very low light levels because the light would be damaging to the drawing so it's a very red light as well. There's a couple of drawings of horses, um, some in red chalk, some in charcoal and ink. There's quite a few anatomy drawings as well because Leonardo da Vinci did a lot of these. He was very interested in the human body and the detail is really absolutely amazing on all these drawings. They are so tiny and with such tiny strokes. Some people came in with magnifying glasses and I wish I'd thought of that. If you go to see the exhibition, it's actually a good tip. Take a magnifying glass with you. There was one botanical study, which obviously I was particularly interested in, and again, very, very tiny. I don't know if brambles used to be smaller than they are now during the Renaissance. I mean, maybe it was a different variety, but as far as I can see, this was quite a lot smaller than the real life bramble would have been, but it's absolutely beautiful. It's really an exquisite drawing. All the detail, the little forms, the veins, it really is so beautiful. And then there is one portrait, which is actually one of the last things that Leonardo ever did as a piece of art. And again, it's a very beautiful drawing. It's not exactly a self-portrait, it's more of a self-impression. Rather than what he looked at the time, it's more what he felt at the time. He was close to death by then, and he felt like this really old man with tired, weepy eyes and parchment skin and it's a really moving picture you can really you can really feel the weariness and the sadness in this drawing and this is something that I always feel when I go to see Olerno da Vinci's exhibition more than with any other artist when I look at his drawings I can see his hand I can see his movement. I look at the line on the paper and I can see him draw and I can feel his mind there as well. It's almost like being in the presence of his work 
across 500 years, I'm in the presence of the artist himself. I'm not sure why it happens more with him. Perhaps it's because he's the first artist I ever really encountered when I went to visit the Clos Lucé little chateau um, as a school trip when I was little. Or maybe because he's the one who got me interested in pigments and paints and I ended up writing a book about it. Or maybe it's because I use a lot of his methods like putting the shadows down before I put the colours on when I paint in layers in watercolour. There is no doubt that if it weren't for him I would be a completely different artist. I might not even be an artist at all so there is definitely a really strong connection and perhaps this is how I feel the way I feel when I go and see his original work but as well as my admiration for his work and my great admiration for the man as well there is definitely a very strong emotional connection too One more thing I wanted to show you before I finish this video is outside in the main hall upstairs in the gallery there's this amazing model uh, of Leonardo's workshop. There's even the Mona Lisa at the end there on an easel. It was made by the year sixes in Waiko Primary School and it really is really pretty and really well done. There's all these parchments there, all these drawings and then easels and baskets of more drawings and and then Leonardo working at his table it even looks like him and I thought that was really really beautifully done and um, really worth having a look at so all in all a great exhibition to visit I would really recommend it personally I would have liked to see a few more portraits there was just the one and I especially like Leonardo's portraits of women and it would have been nice to have a couple in there. I'm sure out of the, all the drawings that he made, they could have found a couple to show us. Regardless of this, it's a great exhibition. You should go and get there and I'm sure all the ones all over the UK are going to be equally as good. So yeah, a great exhibition to visit. Thank you for watching my video, I hope you enjoyed it and I look forward to seeing you soon in another Florist Patch video. Bye!